one of the best things about owning a Porsche is you can come out here on a Saturday morning like I am now and enjoy this lovely scenery with the roof down and just really, you know, just zone out and just um, forget the working week and just enjoy the drive. The drive out here was just as it always is. It was, it was amazing really. Um, and you're kind of reminded of just how capable the Boxster is. You know, if you want to get somewhere kind of quick, um, I was running a little bit late this morning as it turned out. You know, one minute you get plenty of time and the next you're running a bit late. And um, so I got here kind of, kind of uh, uh, briskly, if you like, and the Boxster just covers the miles so easily. So we're out in a place called The Rest and Be Thankful today. Um, I used to come here very regularly and um, it's, a, it's a really cracking drive. I'll just do the usual wee pan round so you see a little bit of this place. So as you can see, it's quite a it's quite a favourite road for for uh, cars and, and bikes. Um, it's it's it's, a, it's really worth checking out if you haven't been here before. It's called the rest and be thankful. So today we're doing today we're doing part two of uh, the video that I a wee kind of mini series if you like of uh, Porsches that I think are going to hold their value quite well. Um, like I said in the first video, guys, if you're interested in that, have a look. It's on YouTube, part one. Uh, we talk about the pre '98 cars, and I think you'll enjoy that. Um, but there's so many cars to talk about, or potential cars to talk about, that I put the video into two separate uh, videos. Um, so today we're talking about part two, which is going to focus more on the kind of the post-1998 cars. And one of the reasons that I did that was because around about the mid to late 90s, Porsche went through a massive change in how they operated and how they, they, they manufactured cars. Basically they were going bankrupt at the time and they had to do something to survive. There's a whole host of reasons for this that I'll cover in a lot of detail in another video. But let's just say that Porsche had to really change their ways very quickly. In order to survive, what Porsche did this was to basically start sharing parts and components across uh, some of the ranges. Uh, Porsche was still quite a small car company, a, a vehicle manufacturing company at this point in time. So after 1998, they changed their manufacturing processes, but they became a lot, a lot more slick at it. They basically consulted with Japanese car manufacturers and found out how they do it, and um, they started to change the way they made cars. They went from being over-specified hand-built cars from from guys wearing spectacles and overalls to, uh, to being machine made, mass produced. So after 1998, Porsches look and feel very different to what they did before, but like I say, I'll cover that in more detail in another video. We're going to talk about cars round about from there on in, that I think are going to hold their money really well, um, long term. Again guys, this is subject to regional variations and time variations or where you come from. Um, at what, any given time, a car market as you know, it's like the housing market, it, it can change at any given time. Um, so by all means check out you know, your own region where you live and to see if what I'm saying resonates and is, is, is relative to, to where you are. I'm based in the UK as you can probably imagine, um, I'm based in Scotland. So this is my feeling, it's just my gut feeling, it's just my opinion, it's not financial advice. Um, it's just based on my knowledge and experience, this is what I think, or well, this is the kind of cars that I think are going to potentially hold their money in the medium to long term. So let's get started. So the first car we're going to consider that I think is going to hold its money, um, and actually it has been holding its money, in fact it's actually been going up a little bit in price, is the Porsche 911. Um, the 996 type was the first um, water-cooled 911. So they went from the 993 to the 996. Again, all these different numbers, I've explained why there's, there's so many different numbers in the previous video. But I, the new 911 was going to be called the Type 996. It was going to be mass produced, it was going to be water cooled, it had different shaped headlights, it was a lot cheaper to make, and more importantly, it could share its components with the, the slightly cheaper Porsche Boxster. Um, in fact, to be honest, most of the, most of the components are, are identical in both cars. In fact, the first two thirds of the Porsche Boxster is identical to the Type 996 911, and that kind of carried on uh, into the future. So the Porsche 911 Type 996, when it came out, it became a bit unloved for lots of reasons. I'll cover that in a different, a different video, but let's just say there's a couple of teething problems with that car at, at first, and it kind of fell out of favour for all kinds of reasons. Porsche enthusiasts and purists are always a bit reluctant to accept change, uh, and, and to change from the original, what they call the recipe of being air-cooled and, and all the rest of it. So it got a bit of backlash, but it actually became really, really successful for Porsche. And in time, it became appreciated and in value as well. Um, and that's what happened with it, you know. 
like all Porsches, you know, typically Por even Porsches that aren't really in favour generally go through a cycle where they might fall out of favour and maybe, say, say after like maybe 10 years old or so, the depreciation curve will generally kind of bottom out and then they'll, they'll more or less stay there, that's, that's a generalisation but typically after about 10 years most Porsches kind of bottom out a little bit unless we're talking about special editions that we'll cover as well but to get back to it, the Type 996 911 I think, and, and it has been shown to, hold its money really really well um, now, I'm going to talk, uh, talking about C2s and C4s, C4s when we start talking about the GT2 or the GT3, GT3 RS or the 996 Turbo all these cars like I've said in the previous video, they're a wee bit more specialised and these cars, like all specialised Porsches or, or, or real special editions they all have a better chance of holding their money longer than the more kind of run of the mill stuff if you like, if I can call it that um, partly because of uh, rarity um, and desirability and performance um, and the historical importance attached to these cars as well so let's just say all of the 996 range including the C4S as well, it's a beautiful looking thing all of the post 911 type 996 range I would say are now at an aging stage where they are going to hold their money really well and potentially maybe go up a little bit as has been shown in recent times so yeah the type 996 911 one circle of duckling now it's very much in, in favour um, as, as, as this happens with 911, it's happened before with the Type 964 everyone used to moan about that when it, when it was about you know talking about how it leaked and all that and like the flywheel exploding and things like that now people just love the 964 they can't get enough of them so as always the, the, ugly, the so called ugly duckling falls out of favour for a while and then history and fashion repeat itself and it gets back in vogue and it's the one you have so yeah, the Type 996 911 is first on the list well, Guys, this video is going to focus on the, the post-1998 cars uh, Part 1 video covers most of uh, the, uh, the, the pre-1998 cars including all the transactional types 924, 928, 944, all of these things So getting back to the uh, post-98 cars Next we're going to talk about the, the post well, continue with the post-911 for now um, The Type 997 The Type 997 came out, um, I think it was in 2004 and it replaced the Type 996 it was a nicer looking design some might say it went back to the classic 911 round style headlights it actually took a lot of design cues from the Type 993 which some people think was the, the most beautiful 911 of them all um, you know, I'm clearly biased, I've got a Type 993 as well and I happen to think that they are very beautiful uh, <laughs> but the Type 997 was very loosely based and designed around about the, 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 the same sort of look as a Type 993 so back to the more classic looking round headlights um, a, a general improvement all round. Some of the initial problems that were uh, that developed through the Type 996 were kind of ironed out. There were some problems remained that I won't go into too much in this video. Um, but let's just say Type 997s, again of all types, of all ranges, are now uh, like a 996. They're at an age where they have bottomed out depreciation wise and they've been holding their money for quite a long time and they've actually seen a, a, an appreciation. Um, and like I said before about a Type 996, the exact same thing applies to the 997 any turbos, any GT3, GT3 RS, um, Turbo S generally anything that's, that's a wee bit more specialised and a wee bit more niche they have seen um, a quicker um, bottoming out of, of, of appreciation and a faster rise in appreciation sometimes these cars, you know, they're, they're you can go on a waiting list to buy, you used to go on a waiting list to buy a, 99, a, a GT3 and as soon as you bought it, it was worth more than you, you that you'd paid for it which is kind of good and bad because some people are kind of buying them just to flip them and it kind of it bombs out the, the, the post enthusiasts a little bit which isn't very fair but that's the way the market guys is what it is um, so yeah, the Type 911 Type 997 of all guises uh, is at an age where it's appreciating and it's, it's bottomed out it will hold its money, I think, generally and it may even go up a little bit um, again, that's my opinion at the end of this video, I'm going to give you my opinion, I'm going to give you what I would buy out of all of these cars um, if I was starting my Porsche journey again from scratch uh, I'll tell you at the end of the video exactly which Porsche I would buy uh, and reasons why if I was starting again so if we start going beyond the Type 997 and start talking about the 991 or 992 there's still maybe a wee bit of play in these cars at this stage in, at this stage in the game they're still a wee bit more modern um, and there could be a bit of play in their, in their um, appreciation or depreciation levels so I won't go too far into them just now I would say the Turbo and Turbo S models and as I always say any special edition in GT3 or anything like that um, GT2 all these cars are pretty sure to command um, a, a premium and also they have a really good chance of, of holding their money 
more so than the kind of run of the mill, more basic, if you like, um, standard cars. So that applies for all Porsches across the range and it applies to 911s. So let's rewind, let's go back a wee bit. So we're back in 1998. One of the other big developments at the time was the, the new model range. Porsche had to come up with a new model range to survive. The old transactional cars and even the 911 was, was falling out of favour. So they wanted something, they wanted a wee, they wanted a car they can come up with to, to really revolutionise the, the brand a wee bit and to apply, to, to, to recommend like, um, to appeal if you like, to a, a younger um, fan base and customer base. And through, through for various reasons, they came up with the Porsche Boxster. Back to 1998, Porsche had wanted to come up with a new model range. They wanted to try and appeal to a younger um, sort of customer base and to revolutionise the brand a wee bit um, and, and bring it into the, the future. So they wanted, they come up with a few ideas, but in the end, they ended up actually looking at the Mazda Miata and they took a lot of ideas from, from Toyota and Mazda and they wanted a wee uh, two-seater roadster. So because the Boxster uses the, uh, the flat six Boxer style engine and um, it's a roadster, you can combine Boxer, roadster, called it the Boxer uh, and the name is obviously it's pretty relevant, it's cool. Um, so they came up with the Porsche Boxster, Type 986, and the, bo the Boxster, uh, like I said, it shared a lot of its components with the more expensive 911. That makes it especially good value if you ask me, because you're really getting you know, a much more expensive car for, the, for, for less money basically. So the Type 986, again, somewhat headlights to the Type 996 911, it was a kind of a, they called it the kind of fried egg style headlights, with integrated uh, repeaters and headlights. Um, like an 11 and that changed to the teardrop style headlights, kind of, kind of summer style, but not, but not completely around yet. So the 986 um, was the first box to come out, and you know, again, it's, it's recently, it's, it's, it's so old now, and it's, it's kind of like classic, if you like, that um, it's, it's got to a point where it's, it holds its money really well. They're absolutely fantastic uh, value these cars. They really are. It's, it's, it's an amazing car for the money. Fantastic driving car. Um, really well balanced. Quite quick. Um, got a beautiful feel to it, very much a real Porsche. Uh, the Type 986 was the first Boxster, and to be honest, that along with the Type 996, it really did save Porsche from bankruptcy. So, it's got a special place in Porsche history, I would say. Um, but yeah, the Type 986, now I would say any cars I'm, I'm talking about, as a general kind of a discussion, I would say the, the manual cars uh, are often the ones that kind of hold value a wee bit more than, say, Tiptronic at the time, or PDK sometimes. Um, or Sportomatic way back in the day. The, the, the manual cars generally do hold their money a little bit better, and I would say. Um, as do coupes, I've talked about the N11s, going back to the N11s. Uh, the coupes generally hold their money a wee bit better than the convertibles or the Targus. Um, although that's, that's changed a wee bit recently, but anyway, getting back to the Porsche Boxster, the Type 986, big success for Porsche. Um, desirable now, more, more so than, than ever. Hold their money really well. And I can see them, of all guises, even the, the, from the from the base model to the S, I can see them starting to appreciate even these more. Box. So it's one of the best value Porsches in the range. It's a great wee car. Um, so yeah, dead desirable. Depreciation proof now, and they may even go up in value. I suspect they might. Although the fact that these cars were mass produced, there's, there's thousands and thousands of them. Um, gives it a bit less of a chance, I suppose. But who knows, you can never the future obviously. So if we go from a Type 986 we can talk about the Boxer Type 987 after that, which is what this is, this is the 987.2. Um, and for my money the 987 Boxer is where the real value lies. I've had a couple, this is my second one, um, and I really do highly, highly rate these cars. Again, you know, it's a mid-engine car, it's, it, it drives really, really well, really well balanced. It's fast enough, um, it looks great. Pan rounds, you can see. Um, I mean, I, I love these cars. You know, like I say, it's my second one, and I, I really do enjoy driving it. Day like today, it's hard to beat. You know, roof down, drive out here. Uh, I, I, I've been driving this more than my my nine eleven for the past few months. You know, in the summertime, um, it's hard to to beat a, a Porsche Boxster nine eight seven. I would say at almost any given price range. But the fact that they're so affordable is just it's ridiculous for you guys, honestly. So these cars are now. Well, the early ones at least are certainly at an age where they've, they've bottomed out depreciation-wise and I would say they're a pretty good place to hold your money, subject to, you know, like economic crashes or recessions or anything like that, or wars or something, you know, you can never tell, but all things being equal, the Type 987 is a good place, I would say, um, and I, I suspect they'll hold their money. 
sometimes you know low mileage cars can be more valuable um, or seemingly valuable than higher mileage cars but then again the premiums often in the high mileage and if you get a really look this is quite a low mileage car as it turns out but I'd have been happy buying a higher mileage car as long as it's been serviced and, and maintained properly that's the main thing because sometimes if you buy a really low mileage car you're a bit scared to drive it in case the miles rack up and that can mess with your ownership experience a wee bit um, so bear that in mind guys high miles is fine in, a, in, a, in an old Porsche especially when you get to this age uh, they're going to be higher miles service and history are key not the mileage so Type 987 um, I would say depreciation proof to a point um, and a fantastic all round sports car and definitely, definitely worth considering um, for yourself and again if we talk about special editions like we did with the N11 there's a few special edition boxers, there's the RS60 Spider uh, with some nice wee tweaks there's black editions, there's sport editions um, there's various types of different boxers, there's the Spider of course uh, and the Spider, that's a, that's a beautiful thing as well, 987 Spider was the first one and it's, it's typical of the Spider kind of a ethos it's got the kind of a, it's got twin humps around the back here, it's got a fiddly roof um, it's quite a bespoke, it's quite a rare car, it's lovely a uh, lighter, faster Boxster S basically so um, special editions like the Spider uh, are going to potentially, like the N11 special editions are going to potentially be uh, more inclined to hold their money or, or appreciate possibly faster than the base models or the S models so that same thing applies for the GTS you know excuse me um, again anything that falls into the kind of rear in, in, in sort of a niche, niche bracket with any Boxster model is potentially going to hold its money a wee bit more than the other ones um, so yeah that, that's about, that just about covers the Type 987s of all types I think is a good place uh, and, a, and a probably a good chance of going to hold their money quite well I would say the list of cars that I think will hold their money really well is the Cayman, the Porsche Cayman and the Porsche Cayman came out with the Type 987 Boxster and you know it's, a, it's basically a hard top version of the Boxster with some minor tweaks as well um, and again mid engine, just, just the same as the Boxster, mid engine, great handling wee car uh, a lot of value, fantastic, sounds a bit different from 911 inside you know because of where the engine is and where you're sat it's got a different sound from the inside um, beautiful shaped thing and it's a uh, it's a very good alternative to an, an 911 you know you can, you can buy a newer Cayman um, than what you can for an 911 of the same price point definitely worth considering and the, early, the 987's um, Cayman are, are again just like the 987 Boxer it's the same thing you know they're, they're at a, a stage where they've, they've probably bottomed out uh, depreciation wise and they're, they're holding quite firm with a slight possibility like I always say that they make up you know and uh, you know it's um, it's definitely one worth thinking about the 987 Cayman specification of the Porsche Cayman it was almost identical to the Boxster uh, the interior and all that sort is pretty much identical what they did do is they gave it a little bit more room to give it a bit more power a slightly bigger engine so they charged a bit more for it um, so yeah the Cayman uh, was was very much a fun favourite. There's some special editions like the special edition Cayman uh, or the Cayman R as well. Um, again, all these ones are a wee bit more rare, a wee bit more exclusive, so potentially a bit more valuable. Um, and later on, you've got the the GT4 as well. Uh, so again, that's a more modern car. But these are all again these GT3, GT4, that kind of thing. Anything like that is always going to command a, a premium uh, for various reasons. So yeah, the Porsche Cayman 987 and beyond. Um, Definitely, I would say, is a place where, as, as, a, as a car that's going to hold its money really well long term. And it's a great it's a great drive, you know. If you've not driven one before, I'd give it a go and see what you think. Um, so, yeah, the Porsche Cayman is a good place, uh, as a good car, I would say, it's going to uh, hold its money quite well. So, uh, we're focusing primarily on uh, Porsche sports cars in this video, guys. Obviously, the KN and that kind of thing, there's various other Porsches that will potentially um, hold their money from here on in. But we are focusing on uh, sports cars for these videos. So, uh, there's, there's more cars I could probably talk about but I'm going to leave it there with this video and if you've got any comments, if you feel I've, I've missed anything, if you've got any comments you'd like to add below, any cars that you think, uh, any Porsches that you think are going to hold their money or appreciate value by all means put them in the comments below, I'd be interested to know what you think um, and thanks an awful lot for watching guys, I always appreciate you taking the time to, to watch these videos and to like and subscribe um, it helps the channel, it helps me create more content and uh, it inspires me to, to, to do more videos. So again guys, I really do hope you've got something from this video. I uh, look forward to your comments below and um, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until next time, cheerio.